Well, fellas, it's the third week in February. And you know what that means. It's time for the Japanese story of Christmas. Okay, okay, no, no. It's it's not that, but it is weirder than that. It's Star Virgin. And while Jesus isn't in the movie the last time I checked, it really is a media story on the redemption of humanity and quite the magnificent monster. All of this began with an endlessly fun little Japanese short movie about an alien who works as a waitress at Denny's during the day and slaughters Ed 209's disabled cousin at night. Hey, you know, inflation, you gotta have two jobs now to survive. Anyway, this five minute short spawned a powerful but brief Japanese media explosion in the late 1980s. The most powerful blast of said explosion was the direct-to-video 1988 movie, Star Virgin. When you think Japanese media of the 80s, you've already thought of what Star Virgin is. It's exactly what you pictured. Giant monsters, big robots, magical girls, sex jokes, and lecherous old men. It's all here, and so are you. Lucky you. Eiko is an alien who happens to resemble a cute Japanese woman. Unlike most Japanese women, however, she wears a chastity gizmo on her arm, which doesn't tell her her blood glucose levels. No, no, no. This was given to her by her father to preserve her virginity. You see, when Eiko is perved on by, say, a horny American tourist like in the movie, this gizmo transforms her into Star Virgin, a superheroine with a sword and a penchant for destroying heavy machinery. Like I said, it's your basic Japanese story of Christmas. Sorry for you Catholics out there. You may have already heard this one. Eiko, desiring some normalcy after almost being sacrificed to a frog monster on the reptile planet, finds relative peace launching her flying scooter over cars and scaring the crap out of people in 1980s Japan. Can you blame her? And some of you are probably wondering, what about her spaceship? Where'd she park that bad boy? Well, she turns it into a United Methodist Church, which is very inconspicuous in Japan. What do you mean that's stupid? Have you ever been inside one? I think they're all spaceships. Prove me wrong. That'd be a great way to get people to go to church. Hey, there's Japanese space women inside here. <laughs> I'd go. Anyway, while she's doing this, she encounters Ko, a simple-minded man who is suddenly having tanks sent to him like he's the president of Ukraine or something. Fighting off this tank, Eiko and Ko relax until Ko is suddenly drafted into the Colonial Marines. A dropship snatches him and blasts off into the sunset. Eiko pursues it and discovers a whole island of samurai robots, Lady Liberty mechs, and the jewel that powered the creation of Japan. While many are going to be wondering, uh, was, was Las Vegas always on an island? Eiko's only going to wonder, where can she find a man horny enough to set off the powers she's going to need to survive all this crap? and save Ko. To tell you any more about this movie would be a disservice. Go watch it. Don't listen to me. You don't ask what those pills do. You just say bottoms up and you enjoy. While the movie may be dumb at an hour long, Star Virgin isn't endangering your free time. I mean, you're probably going to go look at spaceships and Japanese porn anyway. Why not do both at the same time? Yeah. Director and creator Ichiro Omomo's Star Virgin 
first entered our world as that short film in 1986 that I mentioned before. It's essentially the video result of asking, what if Mork from Orc was a softcore Japanese AV Idol music video? In other words, it's amazing. Fantastic. Why isn't this being nominated for Oscars? I, I don't care if it came out in 1986. There should be a category for Oscars that's titled, Is This Movie Star Virgin 1986? And if the movie nominated is Star Virgin 86, it wins! Star Virgin, that short was really just a special effects demo reel. But someone at a little company called Pony Canyon, just one of Japan's largest media companies, saw this short and said, This is big. We've got to make something out of this. And they made quite a few things. One of those things was 1988's Star Virgin, which came out on June 21st. But that's just the surface level take on this. There's a lot more going on here, and my research revealed that the hour-long film touched on just about every single type of Japanese media you can name this side of anime. It was co-written by one of the guinea pig series creators. It features spaceship and tank miniatures by Ogawa Modeling, which I thought... As a stupid pervert, that was the modeling agency for the star virgin herself, Eiko Kuroki. But no, 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 that's actually the creative team behind multiple miniatures and special effects in these movies. And the Heisei-era Godzilla films, the 1990s Gamera movies, <laughs> elements of Gundam, Ultraman items, hell, yes, literally parts of hell from the 1997 Spawn movie. That one kind of blew my mind. And whatever the Egyptian Toyota Necropolis is, just to name a few of the things those guys were doing. Star Virgin's soundtrack was by Kinji Kawai, one of the single most prolific anime and movie music artists in Japan. Star Virgin even had a video game for the MSX2. It's clear to see tons of effort was put into this film. And now it's nearly forgotten. We're lucky there is still enough mental illness and free time in the world to fuel the translation of these jewels into English so that we can really appreciate them. This is just a beautiful little piece of Japanese obscure insanity. I love it. It's fun to watch. You could show this to people and they're not going to get horrified. There's no uh, nasty nudity in it. There's no nasty tentacle stuff. It's, it's, it's a sampler plate for why you probably like Japan. It's the best way to put it. Known or unknown, Star Virgin still stands proudly as a pink-clad warrior with a message from the stars. Stars that hovered over a different time on Earth. Nowadays, it seems like the only things companies do is rip us off or crazy crap like neglect trains until they explode in our backyards. What the hell? Star Virgin, to me, is proof that once at least some of these companies put vision and money into VHS, into spaceships, into transforming anime into reality, into putting Eiko Kuroki into a bathing suit and following her for camera. We had art. Art. What do we have now that compares to that? My God, where do we go wrong? You guys can enjoy your Chinese balloons. I'm going to go into my bunker and focus on some Japanese UFOs that are quite pleasant. I hope when I come out, we're back to what really matters. Japanese insanity and their magnificent monsters. Aloha! Remember, life sucks, but your movies don't have to.